Hello everyone, it's Ben again. So what happens when you type a URL in the browser and press boom, enter? This question is very popular, you know, mostly in the system design interview round. So this question I've been thrown, you know, to me so many times, I can say almost 90% of the interviews I have called for in the SRA Cloud DevOps position. Well, it actually, you know, can vary, you know, depending on what is you are entering. So in this video, I will talk about some key points of the process so that you explain well and get some good points as a tech pro. So not that this is a video series uh, where like I'll be covering like cloud sorry, DevOps position interview questions from different wide interview formats such as cloud architecture, scripting, system design, troubleshooting and so so that you continue you know, to skip the tech world without limitations or boundaries. The best way you know, to answer this question is to provide an example. Suppose you want to visit the website of the mapgoogle.com or you, you type mapsgoogle.com in the address bar of your browser. So not that when you type any URL, you basically you know, want to reach uh, the server where that particular website is hosted. So the browser will need you know, to find you know, the corresponding IP address you know, of the mapsgoogle.com. So that's when the domain name systems comes in play. You know, uh, it translates the domain names like mapsgoogle.com to a number, you know, which is an IP address that corresponds with computer on the internet you know somewhere so to find the dns record the browser will first you know like check uh what we call the catches the first step is catch one it checks you know the browser catch yeah so it is like the first place you know to run the dns query and then check two if it's not in the browser catch uh the browser checks the os catch and then check three so if it's not like on the s catch it then like check the router uh, catch now Let's move on to the second step. So if all catch hit steps fails, the browser will move on to the internet service provider. So uh, this could be any mobile operator or a broadband company in your country which you are using to access the internet. So an ISP maintains its own DNS resolver server which can communicate with other uh, servers associated with different domains all over the world, you know, for specific information requests. Sometimes, you know, that the DNS server may have the information of the domain are stored in a cache so and if that is the case it will just simply respond with the information and the resolution process boom it ends so why so many catches banned so catches are important for you no know, regulating like network traffic and improving data transfer times you know it's just like a, a memory bank you know that is easy for the browser user, you know uh, to access and then let's move on to the third step which is the root server so if no ip in all the catches record not being able to be found locally a full dns resolution is conducted as the follows and like the first point of contact rule for the full resolution is the root server a root server you know accept the recursive resolver query which includes like the domain name and the root name server to respond by directing the recursive resolver to a top level domain so in short root server retain the ip address of the relevant top level domain server based on the extension of that domain the top level domain then the dns resolver as the top level domain name server which is the one of the domains at the highest level are in the structure so the dns name system of the internet after the root domain so now that you know the top level domain name our uh, server maintains information for all the domain names you know that share the common domain extension such as .com, .org, .net, etc so whatever comes you know after the last dot in and here so in our example it's .com so is the tld so the, then the top level domain retain the ip address of the second level domain server so the second level domain server uh, you know is the part of the domain name that is located right you know before the top level domain so for example in google.com the second level domain is google so the second level domain server contains the, the dns record of the server we are looking for so the second level domain server retain the ip address to the browser so to make the whole process time optimized catches being you know created at each step with the, some time to live now the ip address is available now the final step the browser initiates a tcp connection with the server using the synchronized and acknowledge messages uh, with the tcp ip three-way handshake so then the browser sends an http request in order to the hosting server which consists of the firewall the load balance at the web server the application server and lastly the database server so our uh, hosting servers handles that request it uh, assembles a response and in some format like json xml html you know then sends 
sends out the http response which can be level 100 informational level 200 success level 300 redirection level 400 client error level 500 you know server error then the browser displays content and finally done wow what a journey not to have your favorite website now you have an overview how it works behind the hood hopefully you explain well during the interview not that these steps are standard you know procedure that is being uh, followed all uh, these activities happens within a uh, millisecond so let's continue you know to chat uh, in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video up to this end as always keep on skiing in the tech world